There's no hope you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Hey guys, welcome back once again to Niagara Fire Corals. Stick around, because today we're talking electrical safety. Go, go. Here we are guys at this beautiful backdrop of electrical organization. As you can see, if you know or you've been following me, this wall was a complete disaster only a couple of weeks ago. And we just recently cleaned this up and made it look, you know, sweet like it does now, I guess. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. I, I hope you guys watched and enjoyed that video. And uh, I hope you agree with me that it looks great. I've had a lot of comments saying that it looks great. So I, I think you guys agree that it's, it's a, I did a good job on it. So anyways, guys, I thought today that I would talk to you a little bit about electrical safety with our aquariums. And I'm going to give you one huge tip that can avoid almost all issues that you're going to have resulting from electrical issues with your saltwater tank. First off, guys, let's talk about the obvious. When you first get into the aquarium hobby, whether it be saltwater, freshwater, anything, including water, even ponds, the biggest thing that you hear stress from people is, you know, drip loops. Drip loops absolutely are a must. You've heard me say it in previous videos when I talked about uh, drip loops, especially when I was setting up the, the nano tank. I was not overly concerned with drip loops on my main system because as you know, my main system, I have everything up on that wall. So I don't have much concern in the way of needing drip loops because all of my electrical is up above the tank however i still have to pin some of this wiring up i know it kind of looks messy this is the brand new system and no i'm not ready to show it to you guys yet i'm not going to so make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button below so you see the upcoming videos on this new system that i just finished setting up however that's not what we're here to talk about today we're here to talk about electrical now if you can see like for instance right here because that comes from above the tank you see i've put a loop on that and everything that comes from above the tank you see another loop over there uh these wires that come down they loop even the one coming to this this uh power block over here it comes all the way down and it's looped underneath down here like i've put drip loops in on all those Drip loops aren't always going to save you, and that's what this video is about. I want to show you the absolute first thing that you guys should be doing with any aquarium prior to doing anything with that aquarium. Before you put your stand in place, before you put the tank in place, before you put water in the tank, absolute first thing you should be doing. Okay guys, right there. That is the number one thing that you should be doing with any aquarium you have before you do anything. And that is installing a GFI. That's a GFI on this new system. I just installed this just before I put the stand in place and got this tank up and running. I installed that GFI. And I'm gonna take you through and I'm gonna show you what I've done with the other systems. Every single one of my tanks are GFI. And I'll show you some tricks you can do with them as well. Hey guys, so we're back in the, the back room. This is the, the wall that runs my main 270. We have this massive sump down here. Two skimmers, the whole nine yards. Of course, we got that frag system. We have that frag system. Okay, all of this stuff is run off of this wall. Now, as you can see, everything is up higher than the water level so I don't have to be too concerned with drip loops and everything else but I am still concerned about electrical issues in my tank as we all know we can have heaters fail we can have pumps fail Have you guys ever stuck your hand in a tank and got zapped all the way up to your neck or felt that tingling and you knew something was off oh well, that's stray voltage getting into your tank and it's it's not good number one the stray voltage it can kill your corals Okay, especially if you have acros. 
Acros do not like stray voltage. No corals like stray voltage. Number two, it can kill your fish. And number three, if it's bad enough, it can kill you. So we are going to talk about how we're going to avoid that happening, okay? And most importantly, more important than your corals, more important than your fish, certainly not more important than you because you are the most important. However, so is your family and we're going to avoid having fires, okay? That's, that's huge, guys. You, you hear about fires happening with tanks all the time? There's an easy way to avoid that. You know, 999 out of a thousand times, a GFI is going to save you from a fire. It's going to save you from you being electrocuted. It's going to save your fish. It's going to save your corals. It's a $35 outlet that you can install yourself if you have a little bit of electrical knowledge. If you don't, I'm sure you know somebody that can do it for you. It's not a big deal, but it can save you, your family, your fish, and your corals. Well worth the money. Okay, so we'll start out with the, the big system here. This is the top of the wall. You can see there's two outlets up here, okay? And as you can see, that's a GFI, and that's a GFI. That plug right there is on a circuit all by itself. There is nothing else on that circuit, and that plug is also all by itself. What I mean by all by itself means it's coming directly from my panel to that plug. There's no lights and this and that in between, okay? So these are direct, direct lines from my panel. To One goes to this one, 15 amps, and one goes to that one, 15 amps. And I had to do that because I had so much running off this tank, I could not run it off of one circuit. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little trick. You're going to say, well, Steve... You're a liar, liar, your pants are on fire because in your videos, we've noticed this plug over here that you're using and it is not a GFI. So explain that. Well, I'm gonna explain it to you guys, okay? I know I've painted the wire, it's hard to see, but if you were to follow this wire back, okay, that wire, comes across and is actually fed out of this box here with this GFI. And that is a little trick you can do when you're using a GFI. So this GFI, as I already stated, comes direct from my panel. And then I am feeding, that plug over there is being fed by this one. And if you're feeding another plug off of your GFI, your GFI is also protecting that other plug. So even though I don't have a GFI receptacle in that plug, it is also GFI. Okay, so that plug is protected. That plug over there that I'm using, that's way up away from the water, but I still have it GFI'd. This is GFI'd, and this is GFI'd. Okay guys, so now that you have an understanding of the GFI, I'm going to kind of explain how they work. It's not, I'm by no means going to be technical about this, but the GFI more or less monitors or knows how much amperage is being pulled on the hot side coming out of the plug and it should be coming back. And if there's any interruption in that, meaning stray voltage getting into your tank, something was to arc, you get electrocuted, anything that interrupts that current flow, it'll trip that plug and that plug will just shut right off completely. Okay, and that is going to protect your tank from any stray electricity going in there. Or it's going to protect your house from a fire where, say, water was to drip on one of your power bars or into your outlet or anything along those lines. If that happens, immediately that plug is going to trip. And you're not going to have a concern of arcing happening which creates a fire and your house burns down and you know god knows what happens okay that's what this video is all about i'm trying to help you guys be safe we need to be safe in this hobby uh you know i hear it all too often about fires happening and it's it's so avoidable so if you guys are following along and you're subscribing to my channel already you will know that with this little pump here the PEX that's down in my tank and runs up my wall there, this red line that I heat my tank with hot water from my hot water tank. I do not use electric heaters any longer. And I will tell you one of the main reasons why. I continue to have heater failures in my tank. I, 
one or two a year and every single time the reason I knew I had a heater failing is because my GFIs would kick off other than that I would have had no idea guys I I, I couldn't figure out why my GFIs were kicking out trial and error I narrowed it down to which power bar was causing the trip and then from that power bar I just unplug things one at a time until I stop stop tripping the GFI and then it was able to narrow it down to hey it's this heater and then just to try it one more time I'd plug that heater back in and again GFI would trip I knew that heater there was an issue with it aside from that I had no idea I couldn't tell by looking at it I you know but it was it was gonna be throw it would have been throwing stray voltage into my tank which could have electrocuted me as I said earlier my fish my corals who knows could have caused a fire I don't know but what I do know is that GFI up there it told me that the, I had an issue and I resolved it before anything came from it and that's what we're talking about today and that's what I'm trying to get across as a point uh, so many things in this hobby are avoidable if we just do our due diligence and and take care of the simple things like putting in a $35 GFI to protect our family our animals our fish and ourselves Okay guys, so the, the biggest thing that I hear about GFIs uh, time and time again from people is, well, I don't use a GFI because they trip all the time. That is so far from the truth, guys. I've been using GFIs for many, many, many years and my GFIs never trip. When my GFIs do trip, guys, there's a reason why that GFI is tripping. You may think it's tripping for no reason and keep plugging things in and maybe it works again for a week and then it trips. Well, guess what? It's tripping because there's a problem starting in your tank. Maybe it's a pump that's intermittently throwing off some stray voltage. Maybe it's a heater doing that. That GFI is tripping for a reason. Investigate it, please. You could save yourself, your tank, your inhabitants. I can't stress this enough. Uh, GFIs, they don't trip for no reason. And if, 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 and this is a huge if, you do get a GFI after many, many years of usage that starts tripping all the time, then replace it. Because I haven't personally experienced this and my GFIs are many years old, but I haven't personally experienced it. I have heard it is that, you know, they trip so many times and then they eventually start tripping easier and they need to be replaced that may be true if there's somebody out there that's an electrician and knows that for a fact comment below let us know if that's if there's any truth to that as far as i know and all the years of usage i've had with them they don't trip for no reason okay guys so i'm not gonna this video is gonna be nice short one i just wanted to kind of put this out there about gfis because to me they are so important and I can't stress that enough. We think nothing to spend $200 on a fish or, you know, hundreds of dollars on corals, but we don't spend $35 on a GFI that could save all of this stuff. So if you don't have a GFI in your tank already, take 10 minutes out of your day, do it yourself, call a friend. If you can't do it or you don't know how, make sure it's somebody that's knowledgeable and knows what they're doing install a gfi save yourself possibly your family your fish your animals in the tank your house it's worth it okay guys and i'm going to leave it with that right there today and that'll be it make sure you guys like and subscribe so you see the upcoming videos on the new system no nah, i'm not going to show it to you guys yet comment below if you got anything to add to this video be safe. Till the next time, make sure you take care and happy reefing.